Hi everyone and welcome to Game On. I'm Jess Gledhill and I'm here with my fellow sports writer Alex Mitchell. Great to be here Jess. And so this is where each week we'll aim to bring you all the best from the footy and netball from the weekend. We look to preview the games, review the games in this short video uh, which we'll be bringing to you every Friday around the same time each week. So tune in to www.riverinherald.com.au to get all the latest news. It can be anything from player movements to retirements, interviews with coaches, players. Uh, we'll try and do our best to bring you everything we can. So let's get underway with this week's footy, shall we, Alex? Absolutely, let's go. So let's kick off with uh, the Murray Football League that's having their first rounds this weekend. Uh, Chuka United is taking on Tongala at uh, Chuka's home ground. How do you think uh, United's going to go? Well, I um, was very interested to read your stuff that you've been talking to Guy Campbell, his first year as coach of United. Um, I think they've recruited really well, um, and we'll be hearing a bit more from him about that. And Tagala as well. I um, have a new coach, Travis Edwards, who seems very interested in fo uh, focusing on that developing those young players at Tongala. So I'll be very interested to see how this game goes. Yeah, I think it's both two very different teams with very new coaches to the site. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how these guys match up. Uh, but that's enough from hearing from us. We actually spoke to Guy Campbell this week about he feels how he feels United will go against Tongala. Look, it's an unknown. It's an unknown. It's the first first game of the round, as we all know, and we're coming in with a, a very new side, and so are they. So really, it is an unknown. So you just do what what we're in control of, and I hope at the end of the day that. The results go our way. Which and what do you think it's going to take, I guess, to get that win over Tony? Have you heard anything about how they're looking? No, no. We, I know that uh, new coach there that's very big on on development and developing uh, homegrown. So well, that that in itself is a strength. So we're expecting a, a fairly physical encounter, uh, but we'll just once again know what we're in control of and try and match or better anything they, they bring. Uh, so thanks Guy for your thoughts there. It's always great to hear from the coach and get that one-on-one -on -one personal um, response from them. Uh, so we'll now cross to our next game that's going to be happening on the weekend. It's Moama versus Rumbalara. Moama will actually be travelling to Rumbalara's home ground this weekend. Alex, who do you think is going to come out on top? Look, definitely a very tricky fixture, this one. We spoke with Mark last night and he was saying he's new to the league and he's heard that the Rumbalara trip is one of the you know, one of the hardest games in the league. So I'll be very interested to see how this one goes. Um, I think Moama should have the quality to get the win, but again, a very tricky fixture. Yeah, and I think Rumbalara, they've had a few players um, move out, I guess, from the club. and So I think it'll be interesting to see if they are as strong as they were last season. I managed to get down to a few of their games and, and watch them, and they definitely have a drive and a want for the ball. But I think Moama has that same, um, I guess, passion for, for getting the job done. And, and each, each team wants to come out with that win round one. So I think it'll be a very close contest and, and great game to watch. And I'll be very interested to see who comes out on top. Uh, but you actually did say you caught up with Mark. So we'll cross now um, to that interview. You know, pre-season's over. So the playing group's really excited about coming up round one, Rumbalara. Yeah, so uh, the boys are fit and raring to go. Yeah, certainly round one look to play a few of those younger guys that have performed really well over the pre-season and they deserve that reward. Uh, certainly hasn't just been handed to them. They've uh, worked hard, uh, attended all training sessions and put their hand up through the practice matches and that form uh, will certainly warrant them some selection Yeah, come round one. I've heard it's uh, always a tough game over there at Rumbalara, so uh, love it, Murray. It's obviously oh, coaching them this year through missing last year through suspension with Essendon. Uh, so he's going to bring a lot of experience and knowledge to the team. Uh, they're a fast paced side, so we need to be ensuring that we yeah, try to get off to a good start. Um, yeah, so we can keep their home crowd pretty quiet, hopefully. Norris, thank you, Mark, again for catching up with us this week. I will now do a quick wrap of the other rounds that are 
games that are happening this weekend. So we'll start with the Heathcote and District League, Lockington, Bermorm United taking on Mounts. Uh, what what could you see happening in this game, Alex? I think Mount Pleasant might be a little too strong at home, but uh, LBU uh, have recruited pretty well over the off-season. A lot of local guys as well, which seems to be a, bit, um, a theme through the off-season this year, perhaps to do with the new uh, AFL rules about player points. So um, yeah, I think Mount Pleasant might be a little too strong at home, but um, should be an interesting contest. Yeah, it's, it, LBU, they, they finished bottom of the ladder last year, so let's just say the only way they can go is up. And I was speaking with um, Peter Gibbs, their coach, uh, not long ago, and he said, you know, they've got a lot more depth in the side this year, so that should really put a lot of pressure on holding those positions and hopefully make for some better footy being played. So I think they will definitely see an improvement on last season, but yeah, agreed. I think Mounts are just going to be too good this year. Uh, and then we've got Leachy Gunny there taking on Colbo on their home ground. Uh, how do you think that that's turning out? Oh, well, Leachville Gumbau are a quality outfit. They have lost in the grand final two years in a row. And I spoke with uh, Matt Hawken about that and he was saying, you know, a lot of people say you've lost two years in a row, but you'd rather be there than not. Uh, they're an absolutely quality outfit. And they've also added um, a couple of the Chuka boys, Matt Pollock and Joel Donoghue. I think they're going to be a bit too strong for Colbo, especially Colbo without Grant Weeks this year. Yeah, and look, Colbo has recruited quite strongly as well, so it will be a really good matchup. But I agree with you. I think Leachy Gunny, they've just got something else. So, uh, you know, all the best for the game ahead, I guess. And then we've also got Colon District League. So they've already played one round with uh, United taking on Strathy. United coming away in a very close um, four point win there. But now uh, Mathau is actually hosting Pecola this weekend. How, how are you seeing that one? Yeah, uh, I think you said Pecola was sort of a bit scrappy in that opening contest. Um, I think Mathau might be able to get them, but we know Pecola are a quality outfit. I think it should be a pretty close game. Yeah, I think everyone's can be scrappy though round one. And, and like the coach said, a lot of the players hadn't played together uh, for a long time. So it was interesting getting those combinations working. But I think Pecola, they've they've had that first round now. They know what it takes to come out in a close win. And, you know, it's, it's always closely fought and toughly contested between these two teams. They are the two small towns coming up against each other. So it'll be a good one to get down and watch, that's for sure. Welcome back. So we're now coming to the part of the segment where we speak, we're hoping to bring it every week, where we chat to our local umpiring association, the Rochester and Chuka Umpires Association. Um, we'll bring you Russell Brody uh, just to chat about a rule each week uh, that you know, might have some confusion. So this round, we're actually going to talk about a new rule that's been brought in this season. It's the one where they've taken away the third man up rule and it'll be quite interesting, I think, to see how they bring that in at a community level. How do you think the rule's going to slot into our games, Alex? Yeah, well, we've seen in the AFL a lot of confusion early on about, you know, players that aren't the Ruckman nominating, getting free kicks for that. Um, we've seen... Uh, different players who aren't involved in the ruck contest getting hit with the ball and then, you know, is that them interfering with the play? It's just another new rule that's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, well, let's hope Russell can shed a little bit of light on that. So we'll cross now to our, our earlier talk with him. The third man up rule uh, has been introduced to alleviate uh, interference in ruck contests. A third person up that uh, isn't a designated ruckman. So the way it works at a ball up or a throw in, the two clubs have to nominate a ruckman, so there will be one from each team, and they're the only two then that are allowed to contest the ruck knockout. Uh, anybody else that comes in to that contest will be penalised. Anybody who is intentionally or even uh, accidentally preventing one of the two designated ruckmen from contesting that uh, ruck contest will also be penalised, and there'll be a free kick awarded, obviously, to the, uh, to the offended ruckman. Uh, unlike the AFL, we won't be penalising a passive player who happens to be uh, hit by the footy or have the football lobbed in their arms due to a poor throw in or a poor ball up. Uh, in that situation it will either be re-balled up or play on depending on the situation, but a player who's passively standing adjacent to a contest will not be penalised. Um, so the, the main change is, yeah, one from each team. Hopefully, fair contest, no interference in the ruck duels. Well, it's always great to hear from the umpires themselves. So now let's get on to uh, my favourite talk, and that's netball talk. So this week, we've also got United taking on Tony. 
definitely going to be a great game. These two teams always had an amazing combat in A grade last season and it'll be great seeing them come up again, both with relatively young sides, both with relatively new sides. So it'll be interesting to see how that actually turns out. Absolutely. I mean, I, I spoke with uh, Alicia Y from Tongala in the preseason. She says she's recruited a, um, a couple of good players and getting you know, two players back from pregnancy as well. So they should really be improving. And they were already, uh, I think, a top three side last year. Going up against the Premier's L Florence coaching, and she's been stressing the junior development of United. So I think it's going to be a great contest. Maybe United a little bit too strong, but a great game. Yeah, I think, and there's going to be a lot of pressure on Al Florence too, the new coach uh, coming in for a back-to-back -back premiership side. But we spoke to Al a little bit earlier um, in the week, so we're going to cross now to that interview with her just to get the coach's thoughts on the game. Um, I think it'll be a tough game. Obviously, they're usually a nice and strong opponent. They've got some pretty good defence and attacking players back into their side for the season. So I think that our matchups will, will be really crucial throughout the day. And, um, we're just excited to get on the court and start our 2017 season. Um, so we've lost a few players from last year like lots of clubs but we also have um, a few juniors stepping up into our senior squad this year. So we've got a couple of girls who were top age 17s last year and we've also brought up a couple of underage girls who will be in our AB squad this season as well. So that was Al Florence from Echuca United. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our show. Make sure you tune in next week where we'll be talking to GVL coach Andrew Briggs about his Echuca Bombers and Casey Frame as well for her A-grade netball side with the GVL starting next weekend.